Farming can be a rewarding line of work, but it isn't easy with the long hours, the weather, and higher costs to bring a product to market. Now some Maine farmers say they've been hit by something from which they cannot recover, at least not without the state's help. Good evening, I'm Pat Callahan. And I'm Amanda Hill. That something is PFAS chemical contamination, the scope of which is still coming into focus. As we've explained in the past, for decades, household and industrial waste containing PFAS was sent to wastewater treatment plants for processing, and the sludge that was produced was then hauled to local farms where it was used as fertilizer in the fields. But the PFAS chemicals, which don't break down, seeped into the soil, making it toxic. So what are PFAS chemicals used for? Well, mostly they're used to make things water resistant. Many of Maine's paper mills used them to make paper products such as plates, food containers and food wrappers designed to be resistant to grease or other liquids. And according to Maine's Department of Environmental Protection, over a period of nearly three decades, eight paper companies were responsible for more than 500,000 cubic yards of sludge that made its way to more than 500 sites across the state. Despite the link between that sludge and PFAS chemicals, it is still not illegal to spread it on land here in Maine. Which brings us to what happened at the State House today. As a group of farmers, environmental groups, and others urged passage of a bill that would ban it for good. Here's New Center Maine's Carly Dion. Farmers, nonprofit leaders, and local representatives gather in front of Maine's State House, calling on lawmakers to act. It's everything to us. This is our life. Farmer Ken Lamson in Augusta today, working to right a decades long wrong. Earlier this month, he and his wife Adrian Lee learned sludge was once spread on parts of the 94-acre farm they've owned for more than 10 years. Since our land was not passed down to us, like many young farmers here in Maine, we did not have clear records of the history of our own fields and how they were managed before us. As owners of New Beat Farm in Knox, they grow organic vegetables and hay for animals on a farm like this one in Unity. But now, they're living a harsh new reality. We pulled our crops off the market and started drinking bottled water and even refrained from giving bass to our 19-month-old because we were afraid she'd be, we wouldn't be able to keep her from drinking the tub water. A lot of our land now is going to be unusable. Unusable because sludge containing these forever chemicals was spread on farms across the state as fertilizer for decades. From there, the PFAS spread, seeping into the soil and groundwater. These chemicals linked to a number of health problems and diseases, including cancer. Now this might be land that I couldn't sell if I wanted to. Lamson and Lee now forced to adapt, working to find other ways to make money on their farm while their lives are in limbo. We have only a couple fields that we know we can potentially grow on. Growing flowers, one of their only possibilities for that now toxic land. Maine Farmland Trust and the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association are two nonprofits working to improve the financial burden these farmers are now facing. Some of these farms are going on eight weeks with no income whatsoever, and it's really becoming a critical situation. Lamson saying this year alone they'll lose tens of thousands of dollars. Farmer Nell Finnegan's bottom line for supporting this bill? They say no one knew better back then, but we certainly know better now. Farmers say they're hopeful their voices will be heard after today's press conference. Right now, the bill is still in committee, but it is expected to be voted on in the coming months. In Augusta, Carly Dion, New Center, Maine. The Maine Farmland Trust and the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association are working together to launch a fund to support farmers that will be supported by state funds.